Hey, good morning, New Life Church. It's good to see you guys in the house of the Lord. Happy Sunday to you guys. If you guys wouldn't mind standing, we're going to begin with some worship through song. Praise God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. You know, I thought of it when all that is within me. Did you ever notice that sometimes when we use the expression, you got to reach way down deep inside with all that is within me. Bless your name. 
So good to see you this morning. We welcome each one. You that watch, are uh, watching by way of live stream, we welcome you this morning. We're so glad we can all come together to bless the name of the Lord. We're going to pray, and as we pray this morning, if you have a need, you have a care, you have something you want to take to the Lord, just lift it up as I pray this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that we can come to you. We're so glad, Heavenly Father, that we know that you're sitting on the throne in glory. And Jesus, you're sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding on behalf of your church, your people. We thank you this morning for all the blessings you've blessed us with. We thank you for another Sunday morning. We are able to come and worship you uh, and we'll, together as a corporate body. We're so glad for each member, each person that is here today. And I pray today, oh God, that you will uh, just touch hearts, touch lives. God, you know every need. You know every person. You've seen, you, know, you, you saw what kind of a week they had and you know what's going on in their lives. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will minister to each one right now. Uh, I pray that your power and your anointing will flow through them, strengthen them, heal them, encourage and help them. God, touch each one in a special way. And as we pray this morning, uh, Oh, God, we again remember all of our missionary families as they're scattered around the world today. Many of them, oh, God, are in uh, difficult situations, difficult places, uh, places of uncertainty. Uh, some of them, God, are risking their lives. Be with them, empower them, anoint them, protect them, uh, and use them, oh God, to reach many souls for the kingdom of God, I pray. And we pray today, oh God, for our government leaders. God, there is so much that happened overnight, yesterday, overnight. Uh, God, we pray that you will be with the leaders uh, of our own country, the leaders in Israel and with the other nations in the coalition, God, that you be with them, give wisdom, guidance, and direction. Uh, God, I pray that you, uh, God, you're the one that's in control. You're the one who lifts up and puts down, that you will give the the wisdom that is needed to make the right decisions, not rash decisions, but the right decisions, uh, and give them the strength, give them the help that they need. And I pray, oh God, for all the rest of this service, for each part, uh, God, that you will just give strength, you will give grace, you will give help, uh, God, to each one as they take part in the service today. And God, through in, in everything we do this morning, I, I pray that through it all, Jesus will be uplifted and glorified, and you will receive all the glory, and we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Praise God. Greet one another. Let them go know you're glad to see them this morning. As you are making your way back to your seat, welcome to New Life Church. 
We are so thrilled to see all of you here this morning. Those of you who have joined us on the line, welcome. We are so glad that you have connected with us this morning. If you are visiting, this is your first time at New Life Church, welcome. We are so glad that you are here with us today, and we pray that you will feel right at home. If this is your first time at New Life Church, we have a special gift that we would love to give to you this morning. So at this time, if you're visiting, if you grab that Connect card in the back of the seat in front of you and fill that out. At the end of service, you take that Connect card out to the foyer. You will see a table set up that has some gift bags. Simply take the card over there. There'll be a couple people there to greet you and hand you that special gift that we have for you. So again, if you're visiting for the first time, we are so thrilled that you are here with us today. For all of you, I will give you a moment to grab that Connect card in the back of the seat in front of you. Please fill it out. I know we ask you to do this every single week. And the reason we ask you to do that every single week is because it's important to us um, that we have that Connect card for you. So, if, so this is for everyone. If nothing has changed, address, email, phone number is all the same. All you have to do is real easy, put your name on there. If anything has changed, please make note of that so we can update it in our system. On the reverse side of the Connect card, you'll see a place to put down prayer requests and praises. Please make sure that you use that side if there's something that you would like us to pray with you about, as well as something to rejoice with you about. At the end of service, simply take your Connect card along with your tithes and offering, and you can place it in the box that is located in the back of the sanctuary. We do not pass the offering plates, so all of that can be placed in the box in the back. For those of you who have joined us on the line, you can simply go to our church website. On our website, there's a place to connect as well as to give online. Well, when you came in this morning, you received a bulletin. Please make sure that you read it. There is a lot happening at New Life Church that you do not want to miss. For those of you who have joined us online, please know that you can call the church office and we will get one of these in the mail to you today so that you can have all the information on upcoming events. There are a couple of things that I do want to make you aware of. VBS is coming up really, really, really soon. It's only a couple of months away. This is one of our outreaches into our communities, our, not just this local community right here, but to the surrounding communities. It's the opportunity to impact kids as well as families. With this outreach being so big, we need many, many volunteers, anywhere from registration to handing out water to painting pictures to helping out with sports to helping out with preschool. There's a place for everyone. So whether you are a youth, a young adult, whether you are a forever younger or anywhere in between, we can use your help. There is a place for you. So please, after service today here in the sanctuary, we will have a very brief meeting to make sure that we're all on the same page. So please make sure if you can help out with VBS, please hang around after service. We will meet here in the sanctuary and I promise it'll be a very brief meeting. Ladies, coming up is a brunch on Saturday, May 11th. And if you will turn your attention to the screen at this time. So ladies, on May 11th at 10.30 is all dressed up a ladies brunch. Tickets are on sale now in the foyer. So right after service, you will see a couple of ladies sitting out there. You can purchase your non-refundable tickets. This is also an opportunity to invite a friend, to invite a lady friend that you may have to this special day. So don't forget to sign up today for the ladies brunch. Also, ladies, don't forget that Bible study is tonight. We are continuing in the armor of God. And men, on Thursday nights, there is the Gospel of Mark. All that information is in your bulletin, so please make sure that you make note of that. 
Also, the Royal Rangers are, is, they are sponsoring a Derby Day. This is for families. Um, so this is for any age. This is from our youngest to our oldest. Um, it's a day where we come together for fun, food, and fellowship. And we get to race Derby cars that you create yourself. So again, this can be for adults. This can be for young people. This can be for kids um, any age. Um, all that information is in the bulletin. It is taking place after church the last Sunday of this month. Commander Tim is out in the foyer after service, and he can answer any of your questions as well as help you with those instructions on how to build your car and how you need to register. So please support our boys on this Derby Day. Also, there are two seminars that are coming up very quickly. One is this coming Saturday, and this one is going to be by one of our local police officers. He's coming in, and he's going to share with us just some safety tips, safety in the parking lots, safety um, with online scams, safety with how to answer your door and who's on the other side, um, all those different things um, that sometimes we don't think about being safe, but he's going to answer questions that you may bring as well as hit on some of those topics. So that's this coming Saturday from 9 to 11. Please sign up so that we know that you are coming. Um, so that would be today. If you could sign up today, that would be really awesome so we can plan accordingly. He is taking his time to come in and share with us. So please make sure that you sign up today for that. And then next month on Sunday, May 19th, right after the service, we're having an online safety. It says parent training, but this is open to any adult. I don't know about you, but the online world is going so fast and I can't keep up with it. Um, and I'm sure many of you are feeling the same way. So this um, seminar is going to talk about online predators and grooming practices that take place, social apps and dangers, cyberbullying, um, pornography, self-worth and value. So there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be shared. Um, so I would really encourage you, um, again, this is open to parents and adults we're hoping in the fall to do something with our kids. But at this point in time, this is an informational meeting for parents and for adults on Sunday, May 19th, 1230 to 230, right after service. Next Sunday is our Mission Sunday here at New Life Church. It's a day where we emphasize missions. And next week, we will be having special speakers, Zach and Claire House. And they're actually here today. They are downstairs um, in Kids Church. They volunteer once a month in Kids Church. But they've been attending New Life Church for the past couple of years. Both of them have a heart for missions and have been active in many missions trips. Claire is also instrumental at the University of Valley Forge. She helps set up the missions trips that the students take. And as a matter of fact, her and her husband are going to Honduras this coming summer. So next week, they will be sharing regarding missions. So come prepared to give to missions. This would be an offering in addition to your tithes and your regular offerings. This would be something that you would just mark missions on, and you would put it in the box located in the back of the sanctuary. So come next week as we hear what God is doing around the world, and we hear about missions. Lastly, we have a group of Elevate students who just a couple of weeks ago participated in um, fine arts, and they are all standing, I think, that's pretty much everyone. Jordan and Caitlin did a short sermon. Caitlin, Rebecca, Alicia, and Ava participated in a small human video. Caitlin and Sarah both did solos for singing. Um, there was a large human video, video that consisted of Ava, Alicia, Caitlin, Jordan, Rebecca, Sam, and Sarah. Now, in case you don't know what fine arts is, fine arts is the opportunity where kids have not to perform, so the goal is not a performance base. The goal is to develop the gifts and talents that God has given to them. And there are so many different avenues in which they can do that, whether it's through photography or drama, as some of them did, through singing, through preaching, through storytelling. Um, there's so many different avenues because God has given so many different gifts. And this gives our young people the opportunity to explore what God has given to them, to use those talents, and then to grow them um, for his glory and for his honor. At the end of May, the fifth, sun, uh, the fifth Wednesday in May, some of them will be um, sharing some of those ministry things that they did in fine arts. But this morning, they will be ministering to us their large human video to the song called The Fear of God. And it's under the direction of Stephanie Randolph, Kimmy Kelly, and Narissa Watson. So with me, let's welcome our, our Elevate Student Ministries.
very cute. You look really cute like this. Thank you. Lucifer, a beautiful angel in heaven, rose up with pride and wanted all power and authority. So he sinned and became filled with violence within and revolted against God. Therefore, God cast him as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. Continuing to be an enemy of God, Satan has been seducing and scheming his evil plots which started in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was then sin and shame entered the world. And ever since then, Satan has been on a mission to take as many with him to his certain destruction. So be aware, sin could be crouching at your door, desiring to have you but you must rule over it. And know, the fear of God will keep you. Alert. Your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking to devour you. Satan, a thief, has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But take heart. Jesus has come that we may have life, and life to the full. By the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection, Jesus has overtaken the enemy. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So stand firm, 
Do not be moved. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Satan roams around like a roaring lion, seeking to devour us, but the fear of God will keep us. is going to stand. We're going to go back into join some worship. So proud of our students for that human video. I, I've seen it a few times. And every single time I see it, it's like I pick up something, some other biblical story that they're portraying, and it just always makes me so grateful that one, we have students that love the Word of God, but also so grateful for a God who's been so faithful to us. So as we worship, let's just remember that truth, that man, while the enemy is here, to, he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy us, remember, we have a God that just works miracles, and greater is he who is in me than, than he who is in the world. And so we praise the Lord based on that knowledge and that truth, not based on what our current circumstances try to deceive us about God. The truth is he has all authority. He is good, and he loves us. So let's worship the Lord as we remember this.
when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Calling on the God of Jacob, and yours through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the I need you now to do the same things for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm 
stand in awe of you this morning and we worship you oh God in the name of Jesus 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 hallelujah God hallelujah God hallelujah God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it's to you O oh God it's to you O oh God hallelujah 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 God hallelujah Lord God Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The chorus comes to mind that I want us to sing. It says, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. For you are great, 
You do miracles so great. And there's no one else like you. Before we look to that this morning, I want you, for those who are not familiar with what just took place, the Bible talks about gifts that God has given to the church. Gifts that are sparked by the Spirit of Almighty God. Things like what just took place, there was a, a message that was delivered to the body of believers here in a language that we don't know, but God does. And then interpreted in a language that is familiar to us because there are things the Lord wanted to share with us. Many things in that message, one of them hit me so hard. When the Lord said, do not be shaken by the things that you see. It's impossible, almost impossible to pick up the newspaper, to look at a magazine, to see the news, to have on the radio, and not hear about things that run the risk of shaking you to your very core. Bizarre, reprobate, ungodly things. Things about which Jesus spoke when he said there'd be wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. He said in the last days, perilous times would come. Men would be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, unthankful, unholy, disobedient to parents, etc., etc. Those are the times in which we're living. The Lord reminds us this morning, don't be shaken. Jesus said, when you see these things happening, look up and lift up your head because your redemption is drawing near. Glory to God. Folks, God is so real, so real. And he reminds us over and over and over again. And I, I'm convinced that in the hour in which we live, in the hours that are yet ahead of us, God will drive home to his children just how real and authentic he is. Because what we need is more than religion. What we need is more than a religious experience. We have to have that kind of no-so relationship with God. Not to endure the times that are around us, but that we can stand victoriously. And that we can stand as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Because God has not called you and me just to survive. And just somehow limp through and make it through these days. When it gets so dark outside you can barely see. God has light. And he said it's you and it's me. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And it's to his light and his salt that he reminds us this morning, don't be shaken. Don't be shaken. Look up. And lift up your head. For our redemption is closer than it was last Tuesday. Closer than it was 9 o'clock this morning. And in my heart, I just say, even so, Lord, come quickly. Got some people I want to see saved first. Maybe facetiously, I'm not sure, but I say, God, as soon as they get saved, hit the horn. I'm ready to go. And all of us have people we want to see come to know the Lord. Share with them the good news of Jesus. Pray for them incessantly. That when the Lord comes back, they're ready. Live a life before them that's worthy of the Savior whose name you bear. That they too may come to know him. And then you can tell them, don't be shaken. Because the same God who saved you. It's coming back to take you home. Amen? That's our good God. And we give him thanks. We give him praise this morning. For you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great worship. 
worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name for you are great you to be your name, oh God. We magnify your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One last time. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. We sing to your glory, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We sing to your glory, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. As we prayed this morning before service, we were praying once again, God, this is your house. Do whatever you want. Pour out your spirit upon us and not just here in the sanctuary but in every conversation that happens in this house today in every interaction that takes place in all that happens while we're here may the spirit of God pour out his blessings who knows but it might be your voice that is the voice that God uses to touch another brother or sister in Christ it might be your embrace or your handshake or the utterances of your prayers or the magnetic connection that happens as you're just freely worshiping God and it sparks something in the life of the person next to you who just had a decidedly difficult morning and they're not feeling like worship, but all of a sudden standing next to you, it became contagious. Before they knew it, the hands began to go up.
began to elevate the Lord God. When we leave this sanctuary in a few moments, we go in the foyer and we fellowship. May the anointing of God be in that foyer. May it be all over downstairs. May our children be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God. When we fellowship in the parking lot. May the anointing of God be there. And then at some point, we're going to leave this acreage today. We're going to go somewhere. It might be with family, it might be with friends, it might be at home, it might be in a restaurant. May that same anointing of God be with you. If you go to a restaurant today, I pray every one of us will get a server who is in need. And if you're just available, God will just set you up. And it may be something simple, but just make yourselves available. There's somebody who needs what God is doing in your life this morning. Somebody outside of yourself, we need it. But may we be this morning vessels of honor, fit for God's use. And that's in part because of his working and his molding in our lives. But it's also in large part because you and I make ourselves available. God, I choose to be a vessel of honor. God, I choose to set aside those things that I know are destructive to who I am in you. God, I want to be a vessel that you use today. Turbulent times. We are living, nobody can tell how soon Jesus is coming. We just know it's soon. It surely seems like it. Whenever it is, we know the complexion of the times in which we live. In the last few years, I might get to the message. In the last few years, there has been a purging that's been taking place among believers. And God has been weeding out foolishness that we have embraced. Because God said, I'm coming back for a church that's like a bride without spot wrinkle or blemish. So there's been a little ironing going on these last couple years. But when that happens, not only is God weeding out behaviors and difficulties that are ungodly, but he's also putting stuff in. He's imparting, he's implanting, he's infusing things into the body of Christ. He is putting within us anybody who's serious about the Lord. He's putting within us whatever it is we're going to need to stand and be the men and women that God has called us to be. I've told you before that my dad used to say, if you mean business with God, God means business with you. And in this time in which we live, where everything that seems to have been trustworthy at some point seems like it starts to shake or quiver, God is not shaken and God is not quivering. And God has not called this church to shake or to quiver during this time but to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Who's going to reach this world? The eclipse happened last week. You can go ahead and be seated, I think. The eclipse happened this past week. I was talking to a friend from Indiana last night. And he said that where he was, they were in one of those, whatever they call the zone, where it went completely black. It was pitch black. He said, God just began to speak to him. And I really don't remember what it was God said to him. But as it came back to my mind, I thought, people travel, people were flying over here from England to be part of the eclipse, coming all over the place. It lasted about three and a half minutes. Pitch black in many areas, barely lit in some. But it reminds me as I look back on last week in that eclipse, of how quickly darkness can come and how helpless one can feel when that happens. But there is no darkness so dark that the light of the glory of God cannot penetrate. Hear what I'm saying this morning, folks. This is not abstract preacher talk. This is the word of the Lord. I don't think I'm going to get to the message this morning. Jesus said this. What I was going to talk to you about is the fruit of divine assumption. Maybe we'll get to that in two weeks. But one of the things he talked about is the assumption that we would walk in who he has called us to be. And one of the things he's called us to be is light. So when the darkness of sin suffocates the world around us, it's not the rocks that are going to cry out. And I know what the scripture says, but rocks don't sing. 
And may they never, ever have the ability to do that because the people of God are going to outsing them. The mountains are not the ones that elevate themselves to lift their hands and worship God. That's our job. And it's not the trees that are preaching to those who are unsaved. I know the word says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. But when it comes to preaching the good news, he's called upon people to do that. Go into all the world. Make disciples. Go into all the world and tell people that Jesus Christ is is alive and well and real. You are the light of the world. Light is borderline worthless when it's already light out. Nobody in this room is going to go outside after church today and put your headlights on. We have those automatic daytime running lights. I know that. But nobody's going to put your high beams on because it'll be 77 degrees today, bright and sunny in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So your headlights are worthless. Not your blinkers, but your headlights. Absolutely worthless. But let it get around midnight tonight, and you need to make a quick run to 7-Eleven. Hit that switch. Because when it's dark out, you need the light. When it's dark in our world, that's when the light must shine the brightest. It's not our task to run and cower someplace and be afraid and say, what, what's going to happen? As we talked about Wednesday night, you get afraid. There are things that should make you afraid. I'm going to tell you the truth. If a boa constrictor fell out of the ceiling and hit this platform, Bradley's out of here. Because fear would suddenly grip. I'll take dominion later, but at the moment, I'm, there, there are things that will frighten you, and they should. But fear is not a condition in which God has told us to remain. Things will come, and they'll scare you. You listen to the news and they talk about hundreds of missiles and drones going over one of the countries last night being blown out of the air. You talk about the shrapnel that's falling in the territory where innocent people are living. I've been there. I contacted a missionary friend of ours in Israel last night. And while the news reports, some are saying people are afraid and others are saying they're not, I talked to one who was there and he just said, pray for us, pray for us, pray us through this night. Those can be frightening times. But what makes the fear dissipate? We know the God who is in charge. And folks, that's not cliche. That's not just random speech. It's not empty rhetoric. That's the word of Almighty God. The word of Almighty God. So you have brothers and sisters of ours in days gone by picking up the scroll and saying things like, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. One reason, because thou art with me. Thou art with me. What keeps us sane in these times we're in right now? What keeps us stable? What keeps us steadfast and unmovable? There's one thing, because he is the one who is with us. You must understand that this morning. Yes, he's with us to save us and forgive us of our sins and to comfort us and to strengthen us. But he's also with us to work through us. It was not in vain that Paul said, you are an ambassador of Christ. You and I are put on assignment by Almighty God this day. This day, not just in the days of the Old or New Testament. This day when you woke up, put on the uniform. Because you and I are ambassadors of Jesus Christ who dispensed light and who dispensed that preserving salt that retains the flavor and the preservation of Almighty God into a world that so desperately, desperately, desperately needs it. I know sometimes as believers we need encouragement because the fact that you and I are believers does not mean life's always going to be easy. If I asked for a show of hand, every honest person in this room would raise their hand and say, that's true. But God didn't tell us life was going to be easy. In fact, he said a couple things to the contrary. Those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. They hated me, therefore they're going to hate you. But he also said, lo, I am with you always to the very ends of the age. He is the one who also said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. He is the one who told us, I'm not leaving you alone when I go. 
terrified the disciples when he said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to go away. I'll come back. I don't know if they heard that. I'll come back far too well. But he said, when I do go, I'll send back someone like myself who will not just be with you, but he'll live in you. Folks, you and I have all the operational, mandatory operational equipment you and I need to walk in victory. We have the word of the living God. The scripture says of the word that it's living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Glory to God. We have faith. The Bible says, take up the shield of faith with which you will quench all the fiery darts of the adversary. The shields in the days of old were varied in size, varied in their composition, and they were incredibly mobile. They were little ones. You could just do one of these jobs with them. There were larger ones. There were some shields that reached, according to history, from the neck of a man all the way down to their ankles. Some of them were made of metal. Some of them were made of wood. I don't quite get that. They were made of wood. But some of those wooden ones were covered with leather. Leather that was soaked and saturated in oil. They tightened that leather skin around that shield. And they had something inside where the person could hold on to it. So they could pivot. Whatever direction the enemy's arrows came from, that shield was mobile. So if you came up behind me, I can swing around. That's kind of neat. But why the leather? They would saturate that leather in oil because it made it resistant to fire. So when you see in the movies when arrows are being shot and they're flaming, that's not Hollywood, that's history. So when people would shoot these darts, at someone, these wooden leather-covered shields were so soaked in oil, if those darts landed in them, it extinguished the flame right away. What did Paul say? He said, take up the shield of faith, of confident reliance upon God, and with that you will quench every fiery dart of the adversary. Glory to God. That's how we get it done. That's how we get it done. God has given you all that you need, folks, all that you need. And I know that sometimes we need to be encouraged. We need, can I testify a little bit? Wednesday night, confession. Maybe I tell you guys more than I should, but here I go again. I'm sitting right there Wednesday night. Worship is going on, and I've got to teach in a few minutes. And I thought, God, what am I feeling? I felt so distracted and so detached from everything that was going on. God, what am I feeling? I'm not a person who is satisfied with, well, I just don't know what I feel so well. Listen, I want to know, and I'm going to press into it until I figure it out. And as I sat there, I thought, my head is tired. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to study. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to make a decision. I don't want to do it. My head is tired. Now that was honest. And I'm sitting right there. It's about five minutes before I have to teach. And I thought, okay, God, I got it. But you got to take this away because I got a job to do in a few minutes. And as I was honest with God, I just felt the presence of God. First few minutes I get up to share, my mind is still somewhat distracted. I'm trying to read the scriptures ahead of me, and my right eye is giving me problems, so I'm trying to focus, and I, and I can't. My mind is not clicking. But the church where I grew up in, I would hear some of the older saints say every now and then, but then I felt my help come on. And about five minutes into it, I just felt that touch of the Spirit of God. A song came out not too many years ago. And part of the chorus was simply this. I don't remember the melody, but the chorus simply said, the warrior is a child. And every now and then you get tired of being a warrior. Wednesday night I was just a child saying, Dad, I'm tired. That was Wednesday. Friday I get a text from an old friend. He was a student of mine back in the 90s. We haven't seen each other probably in 10 years. We talk from time to time fairly frequently. 
But the text simply said movie next to it, and I thought, well, that's curious. So I hit it. And what it was was a video. He was in his car. He was in Springfield, Missouri. He's driving down Campbell Street. And it was a video I could hardly hear because they had the window down. So I'm hearing traffic go by. But I listened to it again. I put the phone up next to my ear to hear what he was saying. It was a video of Bass Pro Shop, the original Bass Pro Shop. And he just went right by it and then left. And then he turned to himself and he made a couple comments. His name is Ryan. And he said, that's where it all began. And he began to talk about the journey we've had together. It was in the end of August, 1997, the first time I laid eyes on this young man, freshman student. It's him and two other guys, Gemma and Ian and I were at Bass Pro Shop. We're walking around and there's this enormous fish tank they used to have. And as we're standing there, there are these three kids who said, aren't you Brother Bradley? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus I know, but who are you? And they said, we're freshmen. It was, an, I remember it was a Saturday morning, only because I remember that Friday night, the night before, we would always start the school year with the big missions bonfire. They had seen me at the bonfire, and when they introduced the faculty, I met them that day, three of them. Ryan loved God, was going through a tough time at that point, but loved God. And he said, I want to have a prayer meeting tonight at 10 o'clock on campus. Can you come? And I'll tell you what my answer to him was, I'll pray about it. Because I'm telling you, I'm thinking, no. <laughs> no, I'm not coming to the dorm at 10 o'clock at night. But how can you say that? You're a professor at a Bible college. So how can you say that? So I'll pray about it. And I did, quickly. So 9.30 rolls around, I'm not going. 10 o'clock rolls around, I'm not going. A few minutes after 10, the Spirit of God speaks, go. So I got up and I went to the prayer meeting. I left that prayer room at 3 o'clock in the morning. This video Ryan sent on Friday, what he was saying on there, that was the first day we met, 20-some years ago. He's serving God. I had the chance to mentor this kid through his career, and he's serving God today. That was Friday. Saturday rolls around. Last night. And if I'm finishing the message and so on, and I thought, you know what? Let me check and see if I missed any emails. I scroll back, and now I'm back at Saturday, I'm at Friday, I'm at Thursday. And I see a name pop up. And it said, Larry Mills, Strathmore, Madawan, New Jersey. I thought, no. I open it up as an email from a guy I hung out with when I was 17 years old before I got saved. And in the email, he says, is this the Ron Bradley who used to live and work in Matawan? And he said, if it is, I just want to tell you, I remember when you, he said, you found Jesus, or actually Jesus found you. He said, I remember being so jealous, but it didn't happen for me until 1995. And he said, I got saved. And he said, we need to talk. So I emailed him back tonight, 7 o'clock. I'm going to talk to a guy I haven't seen in 50 years who's serving Jesus. Why do I tell you that, folks? When the warrior was a child, I think, God, I'm just tired. I've got nothing. God just nudges you and says, let me remind you of a few things. Let me show you what I'm doing. It's not about me. It's not about you. Let me show you what I'm doing. Folks, I want you to be encouraged today. Whatever happens in Israel, whatever decisions our politicians make in our country, and I'm not saying they're, not with the inf without, they're without influence because we can pray, and our prayers mean something. But whatever takes place around us, whatever shaking the enemy is trying to do in your household, you hold on to Jesus because he is faithful. He can say to us, be steadfast and unmovable, because he's the one who set the example, and he's the one who set the bar. Nobody is more faithful than him. No one is more steadfast than him. No one is more immovable than him. Because according to the Old Testament, he said, I am the God, I do not change. So he's always the same. Always the same. And I just want you to be encouraged this morning.
God loves you. God loves you. And God will keep you as long as you want to be kept. That's our God. That's our great and mighty God. Let me tell you one last thing. Obviously, I'm not going to get to the message today, and that's okay. I'll just tuck it away for a couple of weeks. Sitting here next to Kimmy this morning. And as worship's going on, my heart was just so full. And how this body is just worshiping the Lord. <laughs> and as I sat there, I'm, I'm all, whenever I'm, I'm just, okay, God, show me what to do next and whatever. And I thought, how in the world does anybody lead a Pentecostal service? I thought, how arrogant is the thought that you can lead what God is doing? The best you can do is get in the flow of the Holy Ghost and walk with Him and see, okay, what do you want us to do? So as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, help! <laughs> Show me what to do. Tell me what to do. And as I walked up on this platform, the only thing I knew was that I wanted Pastor Jake to sing that chorus one more time. But then it just began to peel back layer by layer. Didn't know what I'd say to you. I just said, we need to follow the direction of the Spirit of Almighty God. Folks, God is faithful. We have been praying for the last several years. Make this a place you can trust. Make this a place where you can send your babies, where people get saved and can be entrusted to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be a church that has a true commitment to the word of the Lord and to worshiping you in spirit and in truth. I'm here to tell you today that God's answering our prayers. And it's an exacting answer to prayer. God is asking of us to walk in purity before him, to walk in righteousness and humility that he may work in us and through us mightily to the glory of God. When God looks over the landscape of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or the entire commonwealth, or all the United States, or all over the world, not that we'd be the only place, but I pray that you'll say, that's a place that wants my presence, because that's what we want, folks. Amen? This morning, I want to pray. I want to pray for us. Because there might be some who are in need this morning. And I want to take some time to pray. But once again, I'm not sure, I was going to say, I'm not sure how Lee does it, but he, he just seems to flow with the Spirit of God. Old song says, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. I think I remember the words. Great, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail.
again. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for us. Then there's one closing chorus I think I want us to sing. It says, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, it just makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Because God is good. Amen. If you have a need this morning, I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up right where you are. I just want to pray for this congregation. Whatever the need might be, just raise your hand so God can see it. And we want to pray. Heavenly Father, we are so incredibly grateful for your presence this morning. God, you graced us. Lord, not just by being here, because your word promised if two or more of us get together, I'll be there in the midst. But God, you've allowed us to be aware of your presence, and God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that there are things you wanted to say to us this morning that, Lord, could not be rehearsed by man. But God, thank you. You teach us how to be open to you, Lord God. As we stand in your presence this morning, God, I pray for every hand that has been elevated. And there were some that wanted to but did not. And I'm asking you today, God, whatever the needs might be, we're asking you this morning not just that we feel better because we've uttered some words of prayer. Father, change circumstances, I pray this day in the name of Jesus. Bring healing, oh God. Father, touch Nancy McGee right now, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And bring a powerful, divine healing, we pray, to the glory of Almighty God. Father, I pray that you'll bind up the brokenhearted this morning, I pray, in the name of Jesus. That you, oh God, will give us beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. Give to us, oh God, this day the garment of praise to replace the spirit of heaviness. Father, minister, I pray for those who feel hopeless. Father, that's just a lie from the enemy. And Father, we come against that in the name of Jesus. Father, replace that with the joy of the Lord that your word says will give us strength. Father, minister, I pray this day. There are some whose hearts are burdened, burdened for unsaved loved ones. God, I pray, may our eyes see Every one of our loved ones come to know you as their Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. Some, oh God, who have pain throughout their body. And the doctors have said it's chronic. But we ask you, oh God, who formed our bodies, that God, you would heal, strengthen God. Give us miracles, I pray. That we too are like the man in Acts 3, God, that we're running and leaping and praising God because, God, you've done documented miracles, I pray. Father, grant it, we pray, to the glory of Almighty God. For those, O oh God, who are imprisoned by the past, mistakes they've made in the past, wounds they have experienced in the past, things that people have said or done toward them in the past, Father, I pray there'll be a divine turnaround to the glory of God. Liberate your people, I pray, from the shackles and bondages of the past. Those things the enemy would want to use to keep us held captive, O oh God. Father, may freedom reign in the house of Almighty God this day. Father, do your work as only you can. Do your work as only you can. God, we thank you. 
God, we love you. Father, in our heads right now, I'm going to ask everyone here to, in your mind, get the name of someone you know who is not saved. And collectively, we're going to call those names before the Lord right now and believe God to save them. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, for all those people whose names fill the minds of those in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for divine interruptions in their lives, that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. God, shake them, rattle them, I pray. Bring them before you. God, may they be consumed with the reality that Jesus loves them. And may their lives be transformed, oh God. Break addictions and bondages and lies and resentments and unforgiveness, oh God. Break all those excuses. Those who said, I used to be in church and I got hurt. I can't go back again. I can't turn to God. Break those things, I pray, in the name of Jesus. The Lord, people come to know you. Our loved ones come to know you as their Lord and Savior. God, do a mighty work, we pray. God, help us to honor you. Help us to honor you, God, in all of our ways, in all of our lives. Forgive us for our sins, oh God. Forgive us, God, for stupid things that sometimes we do. Help us, God, to walk and to stand in righteousness. Teach us. Grant us your favor and your strength, we pray, to the glory of Almighty God. And God, we give you thanks. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, when I think about the Lord. How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout. And all the honor and all the praise makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the makes me want to shout it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory all the honor and all praise. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just celebrate God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sweet Spirit in this place. And I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions. presence and I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. with your love, filling us with your love, and for these mercies, and for these mercies, we lift our hearts, we lift our hearts in praise, without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Glory to God. That's how to have church. <laughs> you know, folks, it's the Lord's house. I think this is the last thing I'll share with you. When I was at the Bible college, I would share with the students in the preaching classes that there are times when God will just, you're all set, you're all prepared, and he'll just redirect and you're thinking, well, well, God, this is good stuff. I worked hard. I spent hours. And he's saying, yeah, but I redirect. Why does he do that? That's his business. I don't know. But I would tell the students, the easiest thing to do in our flesh is, I've worked hard on this. I, but this is what we're going to do. But the right thing to do is to always yield to the Spirit of God. Who knows why he had you study and it didn't happen then. There's another time. In the kingdom of God, time and location are critical. And when God says, I want to make a shift, the safest thing to do is to go with it. I like things to be planned. But I like the Holy Ghost a whole lot more. And when there are times when he simply says, this is what I want to do. You know why I think sometimes he does that? Because he knows what's going to be needed among us. I pray that every single one of us in this house today will walk away with something specific, some nugget with your name on it from God. God makes it very clear that I'm with you, that I'm present. Because he wants to meet us. And for that we give God thanks. Take some time to fellowship. Greet those around you. Please don't leave this place without letting somebody know you love them in Jesus Christ. And then when you go, it's bright. It's going to be 77 degrees, full sun. But it's dark out there, folks. Be light and be salt. Because the world needs you. It's wonderful for us to come together. We've got our batteries charged. Go out there and make it happen to the glory of God. God bless you as you go today. Know that God loves you. So do we. Have a wonderful day in Jesus. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been.